we are going to demonstrate you the spleen. Spleen is the lymphoid uh, tissue. It is responsible for the filtration of blood and the destruction of the old RBCs. Uh, spleen is situated in the uh, left hy uh, hypochondrium and uh, it is uh, as part of it is also present in the epigastrium. So this is uh, spleen. Uh, now how to hold the spleen in the anatomical position? First of all you must uh, know something. Uh, about spleen the borders and surfaces this is the superior border of the spleen this one the sharp superior border of the spleen this is the anterior end of the spleen it is uh, a bit you can say uh, in the form of a line this is anterior end of the spleen and this is the posterior end of the spleen anterior end of the spleen and this is the posterior end of the spleen you must keep the spleen in such a way that the anterior end is downwards and medially while uh, uh, sorry downwards and laterally while the posterior end is uh, upwards and medially so if i hold the spleen in the anatomical position it would be like this so this is the anatomical position of the spleen you can note that my three fingers they are in contact with the spleen they, these three fingers are representing the 9th 10th and 11th rib this is the diaphragmatic surface of the spleen and this diaphragmatic surface of the spleen is in contact with the 9th, 10th and 11th rib. This, my three fingers are representing this position. The long axis of the spleen is along the uh, axis of the 10th rib. So this is the anatomical position of spleen. Now uh, we will uh, see the surface landmarks. This one is the superior border. This is the inferior border of the spleen and this is the intermediate border. This is the intermediate border, this one. It is the intermediate border of the spleen. It is not very sharp as compared to the superior border. So it is the in, uh, type of blunt and this is the intermediate border. Now, uh, this in, the, uh, the, the spleen has got two surfaces. The uh, diaphragmatic surface which is in contact with the ribs and the visceral surface like liver uh, it has also got some impressions so this is the these are the impressions on the visceral surface of the spleen this impression is the impression for the fundus of the stomach this is the fundus of the stomach and here is another impression between the intermediate border and the inferior border of the spleen there is an impression this impression is for kidney this is the impression for the uh, left kidney and uh, similarly here uh, you can also see a triangular impression this one this is the triangular impression this impression is for the left colic flexure so these are the visceral relations of the spleen and uh, if you see there is a, uh, also another impression here this impression this it is the impression for the pancreas ta tail of the pancreas you know the tail of the pancreas is in contact with the spleen uh, in this specimen you can see this is the pancreas uh, it is in contact with the duodenum so this is the tail of the pancreas this is the tail of the pancreas so you can see it is in contact with the hilum of the spleen and it is making an impression here this is the tail tail of the pancreas and it is making an impression on the spleen here so it is in contact with the spleen so it is surface now uh, the hilum of the spleen in the uh, uh, nearly in the center you can see some structures which are entering into the spleen they are forming the hilum of the spleen this is the hilum of the spleen some vessels and nerves are entering into the spleen and they are making the hilum uh, now the peritoneal relations uh, the spleen is uh, completely covered with the peritoneum so it is uh, being separated from the lesser sac by the cavity of the greater sac. Since it is an intraperitoneal organ, it is being separated from the lesser sac by the cavity of the greater sac. So this is uh, uh, the, uh, the peritone peritoneum is covering the spleen and uh, now the ligaments, ligaments are very important. You can note that there is a ligament here above in this region. You can appreciate a cut portion of it. It is the gastrosplenic ligament and here is another ligament 
that is not very clear but uh, this is the cut portion of pancreas it is lying within the substance of the leno renal ligament this is the a tail of the pancreas its cut portion it is lying in the substance of the leno renal ligament another ligament is the phrenico colic ligament uh, th uh, this this uh, it is this structure that you are seeing here it is actually the tail of the pancreas which has been cut so it is not any ligament but it is a tail this one is the tail of pancreas it is lying within the substance of the leno renal ligament gastrosplenic ligament leno renal ligament uh, in which the tail of the pancreas is embedded and the third one is the phrenico colic ligament the phrenico colic ligament is not attached to the spleen uh, it is attached to, to the uh, uh, the transverse colon and uh, above it is connected with the diaphragm so it is only supporting the spleen but it is not attached to the spleen you must keep it in mind so these are the ligaments which are attached to the spleen so this is all about spleen uh, and uh, something that i want to show here is this angle it is formed between the superior surface a uh, superior border of the spleen and the anterior end of the spleen this is the anterior end of the spleen and this is the superior border here ang angle is forming this angle this is known as the clinical angle of the spleen this is called the clinical angle of the spleen why it is called the clinical angle of the spleen because in the splenomegaly when the spleen is increased uh, two to three times than its size uh, this is very palpable you can palpate this angle so it, that is why it is known as the clinical angle of the spleen one thing that i want also want to show you here is the notches these are the notches they are present more uh, mainly or most of the time they are present on the superior border this is the superior border and uh, there is only one notch here so these are the notches which are present on the superior border but you must keep it in mind that you cannot identify uh, the superior border just from the notches because sometimes these notches are also present on the inferior border here the notches are not present in this spleen but uh, in some spleens the notches are also present on the inferior border so you cannot demarcate the superior border from inferior border by just uh, looking at the notches but most of the time you will find the notches on the superior border so it is a identification point of the superior border why the notches are present on the spleen because uh, there is an embryo uh, embryological significance of this when the spleen is developing it is actually developing in the form of uh, uh, lobules uh, so when the lobules are fused together they form uh, a single uh, one spleen so these notches represent the lobular uh, development of the spleen for example this was one lobule and this was another lobule so these two lobules fused together and gave us a single spleen sometimes the lobules fails to fuse and uh, uh, there is a there is a condition which is called the accessory spleen so uh, you may find in some conditions that uh, uh, a part of spleen is separated from the main organ and uh, it is known as the accessory spleen and the accessory spleen has various positions in the abdomen it may be present in the hypochondrium in the epigastrium it may be present uh, in the paracolic spaces uh, and it may also uh, may be present uh, in the spermatic cord as well so these are the clinical points regarding spleen